going on YouTube today we are painting the Subaru So the color I had originally picked for this car was actually Nardle Gray, but this was way back when I was trying out the whole Autoflex thing, and at least to me back then, Nardle Gray wasn't that popular of a color. Um, but you fast forward to now, and everybody has that color. It's either wrapped, painted, dipped, uh, even manufacturers coming out with their own versions of it, you know, Subaru, Toyota, Honda, Hyundai. They all have their own, I guess, tint of Nardle Gray. And I just didn't want to be another car with that same color. So I, I went ahead and chose something different. The color that I actually chose was off the 2005 Lamborghini Gallardo. It's a, uh, I believe it's called Grigio Telesto. It's basically just a darker version of that gray with some pearls in it. And I'll go ahead and show you guys that. All right, so here it is. This is actually in the shade. It just looks like a dark shade of a uh, Nardo gray. But when you bring it out to the light, you actually start to see the pearls that are actually in the color now obviously this hasn't been cut or buff but you kind of get the idea of the color For this video specifically we actually did not get to record everything from beginning to end as far as disassembly or body work or any of that the car was actually already completely disassembled before the switch from autoflex to paint even happened um, as far as body work went there really wasn't much body work to do um, but that being said after the car was painted I did notice on one door multiple low spots that I actually created while sanding that I completely missed to address before we actually started spraying. So in a later video you guys will actually see me sanding down the car door, working with body filler, glaze, and sanding blocks to try to get that smooth, and then a respray. So you guys will see that. Uh, the only other issue that there actually was, was with the autoflex itself, trying to remove the autoflex because I ended up with a material that was just way too thin to try to peel off. And if you know anything about Autoflex, it's actually way more resilient to chemicals than just regular plastic dip. If I take, say, a cup of gasoline and pour it on a panel sprayed with plastic dip, it's going to bubble up and run off. If I do that with Autoflex, actually nothing happens. So that was our real, the real only issue that was there. Now, before we actually get to painting, I am going to go over a couple things with you guys. Now, you guys are going to notice that I'm not going to be giving you guys any mix ratios or any tip sizes, and it's for a good reason. Uh, whichever manufacturer of paint or whichever line of paint or type of paint you guys decide to go through they're each going to have their own requirements of what ratios and what tip sizes they call for and I don't want to give you guys the wrong information now you're obviously going to need an air compressor tank some something around 50 gallons would work but more importantly what you're going to want to check is how much CFM your gun calls for and how much CFM your air, air compressor can actually produce you're obviously going to need an air hose and more importantly, you're gonna need an air to water separator so you can keep any water from coming out while you're spraying. Now, something you guys might notice that I do, um, I tend to get a lot of moisture buildup at the quick disconnect from the gun to the air hose. So what I like to do is wrap it in a shop towel and I actually tape it on there. That way it doesn't build up and start dripping on the paint as I'm working on it. Um, now, as far as what gun to use, Obviously, you guys could go out and buy your solder jets or whatever it is, but um, any good quality gun is somewhere around four to five hundred dollars, and this obviously is a DIY job. So we went to Harbor Freight and we actually got the more expensive gun that they actually sell, which obviously still isn't expensive; it's only about sixty dollars. But this gun actually automizes a ton of a lot better than the cheaper ones. So just go ahead and spend the extra twenty dollars and get the so-called professional gun from Harbor Freight. Any Harbor Freight gun that you buy, you're gonna notice that they come with these little paint filters that actually go right here. Just go ahead and throw these away because they are gonna give you issues. If you're painting paint, if you're spraying paint, and especially if you're spraying plastic dip, this is gonna give you a flow problem. So just go ahead and toss those. If you're worried about contamination, just go ahead and buy the disposable paper filters and go ahead and strain your paint before you actually put it in the gun. You're also going to want a ton of these measuring cups, they're disposable, so you can mix in your ratios and then pour them into the gun. You're obviously going to need a paint mask, uh, no matter what type of mask or anything that you buy, just make sure that your filters are actually rated for paint and not just dust, because then that will do nothing for you. Now, when you guys see me painting the vehicle, you guys are going to notice that I only I did disassemble the vehicle and I'm spraying a panel at a time. Now, 
that's perfectly fine if you're spraying such things like solid colors. But if you're painting something with heavy pearls, metallics, color shifts, you do not want to do that. You, you want all the panels on the car and you want to spray the entire car at once. You want to go from one, length, one end of the car and spray the entire length of the vehicle and then come back as you pass. Um, the reason for that is if, if you're spraying something uh, like a metallic. If you're spraying something like a metallic and you have one door, you spray the door, you spray the body in separate times, when you go ahead and assemble them, the flow of that metallic or that pearl or whatever it is might not match up. So you do not want to run into that issue. And I am aware that my, my paint actually has some pearl to it, but I feel like it's more of a solid color than a pearl. So I'm just hoping that when I put it together, it's not gonna be anything noticeable, but I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. Whenever you're spraying any panel of the vehicle, you wanna spray the entire length of it in one pass. You never wanna stop halfway and then meet it up from the other side because essentially what you're creating is a high spot. A high spot for sags, for drips, and obviously, even if you get all them drips out, you're disturbing the flow of the actual paint. So just remember, to never stop halfway now. If you're having issues with tiger stripes, which I sometimes do, more than likely it's gonna be the roof where you're gonna get tiger stripes. What you wanna do is you wanna close up your fan to where you just get a small wet spot. And you're gonna start at the middle and then you're gonna keep dragging that small wet line back, back closer to you. You're gonna wanna go to the other side of the vehicle and you're gonna start off halfway to where that last wet spot was and keep dragging that edge all the way towards you. And that's gonna eliminate any tiger stripe. Now, before we can paint the car, we're gonna need to sand down any body work that was done. Any panel that's getting paint on it needs to be sanded down as well. Next step is to wash the car. So after we wash the car, we're gonna dry it. Then we can begin to mask off any parts that we don't wanna get paint on. Uh, the windows, the wheel wells, whatever it is. Then we're gonna have to prep the car for paint. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe it down with a wax and grease remover or paint prep or whatever it is that you choose to wipe your car down with before you paint. Then we're gonna get it ready for primer. As for me, I went ahead with epoxy primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix my primer with my epoxy hardener. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and my first coat is always gonna be a tack coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and mist on my first coat. Then after that, I'm gonna go anywhere from two to maybe three wet coats of the primer. Once that's done, we're gonna move on to color. So I'm gonna mix my base coat with the reducer. Then I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna mist on my first coat and anywhere from two to three coats, just enough to get full coverage of the color on the panel. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix my urethane clear. Now, when, as far as clear goes, I, I like to put at least three wet coats of clear coat. And the reason for that is we're spraying in an uncontrolled area. There's gonna be dust, there's gonna be orange peel, there's gonna be bugs that wander too close and get stuck in the clear coat. So we need enough clear coat to work with in order to be able to sand off any orange peel, bugs, whatever it is, we need to be able to have enough product to sand down, cut and buff without ever going near the base coat. So a minimum of three coats and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and start.
finally got the entire car painted. I got most of the body panels here and the shell right here. Now in the next video, I will be showing you guys how to sand, cut, buff, and polish the entire clear coat to get you from a really rough orange peeled surface such as that to something completely smooth and reflective such as this. And I'll also be showing you guys in case you accidentally sand through the clear into the base or if you actually burn through on a corner, it's perfectly fine. I'll show you guys how to fix that as well. So I'll see you guys on the next video when we cut and polish the car.